Looking around Colgate's campus today, what do you notice? Today, Colgate's student body is comprised of 53% female students and 47% male students. However, less than 40 years ago, women were hardly visible on Colgate's campus. It was not until 1970 that Colgate's administration officially implemented coeducation. Prior to this decision, only a handful of women attended classes at the school. After the motion was passed, a notable amount of women were admitted to the school, bringing about a need for change in order to accommodate them. How did the administration prepare for the arrival of women? In what ways were they concerned with facilities and student organizations? Finally, how did women feel when they first came to Colgate in September of 1970? When the first 132 women arrived on campus in the fall of 1970, they were all housed in Stillman and Andrews, formerly all-male dorms. In fact, by 1974, the university still hadn't prepared enough space to house women. Female applicants were turned down simply because there was not enough space for them. President Bartlett acknowledged the low admission rates of women in 1970 was due to lack of housing, and admitting more women would require cutting back on the number of men at Colgate. According to women who lived there in this first year, the dorms were very ill-equipped for housing females. The university, I don't think, was prepared at many levels to deal with women. In terms of the physical plans, I lived in Stillman, and we did not have mirrors in any of the rooms. We had one mirror in the bathroom, and that had to be shared by 16 girls. We had no mirrors in the rooms until second semester. I answer class of 1970. Another woman noted that there were still urinals in the bathrooms, which the university tried to make more feminine by putting flowers in them, rather than just removing them altogether. In addition to dorm life, women noted other facilities on campus that were not ready for them. One facility that was severely lacking in women's resources was the health center. Oh my god, no. Um, that was bad. I don't think there was a woman on campus that didn't have a bad experience there. Women complained that the health center only had male doctors, and so many female students traveled as far as Syracuse for doctor's appointments. The doctor had probably been there a long time, and he knew nothing, probably, about females, and he was kind of lecherous. Laura McComer, class of 1970. Furthermore, women were disappointed in the lack of guidance offered. There were very few female mentors, role models, and professors. It wasn't until 1976 that Colgate's first women's center was finally created. When women first arrived on campus, they quickly became aware of the lack of clubs and organizations specifically for them. While women's teams obviously could not be established before their arrival on campus, it wasn't until 1974 that two women's varsity sports teams were established. By 1975, men and women had a similar number of varsity and intramural sports teams. Other female clubs took a similar amount of time to develop. In 1973, Female music groups began to form, but the most notable, Swinging Gates, was not formed until 1975. The role of females in campus organizations reached an important milestone in 1974. That year, the Women's Caucus was formed, which spoke out about sexist issues, creating a stronger female voice both on and off campus. Even the wife of President Bartlett commented on how impressed she was by the caucus. Even though Colgate's administration was ready to allow coeducation into its curriculum, by September 1970, the student body and Colgate faculty still remained unwilling to change years of an all-male tradition. It was through hard work and strong persuasion that eventual changes were made to fully integrate women into Colgate's campus beyond the realm of the classroom. Although the transition into a female majority was a slow process, over the past 30 years, women have not only increased in numbers, but have also become a dominant presence. Proof of these developments can be seen walking around campus today.